What we're looking at here is some shaky old video I shot of a spring on the Appalachian Trail during dry conditions. The flow of the spring has slowed to a trickle. I had to put a green acorn in the shot so the camera could record the water. My greatest concern on the Appalachian Trail has always been that I have enough water and when I see a site like this I start to get worried. We're going to take a detailed look at treating and carrying water on the Appalachian Trail, but when it comes to water on the AT, that's actually the easy part. During certain weather conditions, finding water can be the hard part. Because the Appalachian Trail is mostly at high elevations, water sources depend on rain. This dependency can display itself at varying degrees. Some water sources are seasonal and will dry up quickly unless they're amply supplied by rain. Many other water sources will be mostly unaffected by short dry periods, but many, if not most water sources, will be affected by long dry conditions, for example, a drought. Facing heavy rain on the Appalachian Trail can be a nuisance to be sure, but nonetheless, whenever it happens to me on the AT, I welcome it because it increases the odds I will have no trouble finding water. Water conditions, of course, tend to vary at different times of the year. Northbound through hikers on the AT typically are hiking all through the wet months of the spring, reducing their overall odds of encountering problems. Section hikers are on the AT almost all months of the year, including the dry months, increasing the odds of water problems then. My video of the spring with the acorn was shot during a September hike during dry conditions. Southbound through hikers typically start around June or so, so they miss the wet spring months. This increases the odds they might have a problem at some point. So let's talk about some ideas for diagnosing and dealing with low water conditions. If we first arrive at the trail and identify muddy spots on the trail, puddles of water in the woods or in the rocks, obviously it's wet, everything should be okay. If, on the other hand, we pass a couple of springs that are dry or running quite slowly, and the guidebooks tell us these springs are not seasonal, this is a definite bad sign. Again, there are hikers on the AT pretty much year-round, traveling northbound and southbound, so I would talk to oncoming hikers during those conditions to get some information about the springs in front of me. Based on what I have seen, streams are often running when springs are in bad shape. Guidebooks can tell us where there are streams in front of us. If water conditions are dicey, I often feel I have no choice but to load up and carry as much as I can. Usually, I am capable of carrying up to 7 liters of water. That is 14 pounds and is no fun carrying 14 pounds of water. But it beats running out of water completely. And, as an example of sheer desperation, in another video I told how I had to dig a hole at the bottom of a muddy, dry spring and let it fill up with water. When this happened, I was at a shelter with a father and two sons. One of the sons was diabetic. The dad was worried about his son not having any water. We strained that muddy water with bandanas and shirts, and that was a time-consuming business. After that, I always carried at least two or three paper coffee filters with me if I ever had to do something like that again. And lastly, when water conditions are low, if you know where stores are close to the AT in front of you, buying water might be an option. At the least, I never pass a water source right in front of me. If I'm down to about a liter or so, I'll always stop and get some more. I have seen three kinds of springs on the AT. One type is just a hole in the ground, sometimes aligned with rocks or concrete. Another type has a flow that creates a small stream. Yet another type is a pipe sticking out of the ground with water coming out of it. The water that comes from these springs is very clean. It comes from underground. It is not tainted by nearby civilization or agriculture, and even though, out of habit, I have always treated spring water, I would not be too concerned if under some circumstance I had to drink spring water that had not been treated. If the spring is just a hole, I take care not to disturb any mud at the bottom. Sometimes when they create a stream, it can have bits of small leaves and plant matter in it. I always carry a small white plastic tub so I can scoop water with that tub and tell at a glance if I picked up any pieces of that vegetation. If I do, I toss the water in the bushes and try again. Sometimes, however, the bits of leaves and plant stuff are so thick I can't avoid picking it up. 
When that happens, I run water through a loose weave nylon cleaning cloth I got at a supermarket and strain that stuff out. A couple of times I have found a nice grass lined depression which captured water and turned into a puddle. And the water that came out of those was very nice. It's also possible to find water standing on rocks, but I've never seen water standing on rock that would equal the volume I saw in those puddles. I have carried water mostly in empty Gatorade bottles. I often take a Nalgene bottle or a small Nalgene bottle. I also have this platypus bag. I carried it on all my AT hikes. I was sure in the beginning it would eventually develop a hole. It never did to my surprise. The opening on the thing is a little small so I always carry a small funnel that helps fill it. I also sometimes carry an MSR bag that holds about the same volume. If I fill both of these things up and my Gatorade bottles that means I can carry up to 7 liters in a pinch. Many long distance AT hikers are going to carry a water filter, so we'll look at a couple of old school options and one new school option. On my first AT hike, I carried an older model MSR ceramic filter. It weighed about a pound, and even when it was new and clean, it was very slow. After a few days of use, when it got dirty, it was even slower, despite the fact that I would wipe off the ceramic element and do all I could to keep it clean. On my next hike, I decided to switch to water treatment, and I carried a small ceramic filter as a backup. Again, it is ceramic, and when new and clean, it was just as slow as the MSR filter, but at least it was light. On yet another AT hike, I went with a friend who was using a sweet water filter. This filter was at least three times faster than my ceramic filters and maybe even faster. The sweet water is now manufactured and sold by MSR and looking at their website, I infer that the information they're giving us tells us this sweet water filter is just as effective as the ceramic models. MSR sells two models of this filter. One comes with a small bottle of stuff designed to kill viruses in water if we think we need that. The Sawyer water filters are of a different design and they certainly have changed the water filtering landscape. I got this mini Sawyer for $20 at a big box store. It's small and very light. It can be used in one of several different ways. One way is to put untreated water into a bag that comes with the filter and squeeze the bag to force clean water into another container. Another way is to put untreated water in a bottle, screw the filter onto the bottle and suck treated water out. Yet another way is to put a straw that comes with the filter on the filter, allowing you to drink straight from a water source. On the AT, I want to cook with treated or filtered water, which would mean collecting clean water in a bottle designated for that purpose. With about a half a turn or maybe a little less, I got this Sawyer Mini to fit tight enough on this platypus and this water bottle and this soda bottle. With some options available, Sawyer will include more of their proprietary bags in the package. There are a couple of things to watch for if you use the Sawyer Mini. If you use the straw and stick the filter into water to drink that way, make sure you have the straw on the correct end of the filter. If we don't do this, we'll suck into our mouth the crud we earlier filtered from water. A big arrow on the side of the filter shows us the correct way the water is supposed to go through the thing. At the first sign of sluggish flow with this Sawyer Mini, I would back flush the filter with a cleaning plunger that comes with it. If we fail to do this, we might be tempted to screw the filter on tight to one of those water bags and then squeeze the bag hard. This could have the potential of damaging the thick gasket inside the filter or maybe rupturing the bag. This flushing process requires having enough filtered clean water on hand to do the job, so we can't forget that. Another detail is my ceramic filter and the sweet water both have screens on their hoses that prevent small bits of leaves and so forth from entering the filter. The Sawyer does not have this kind of screen. A lot of small debris like this could enter the filter and make it clog more quickly. Now we have come to my current method of treating water, which I can tell you pretty fast. I use Aquamira. A pair of bottles like this will treat 30 gallons and that would last me about 40 days on the AT. When I stop at a water source, the first thing I do is pull out the Aquamira bottles and mix the stuff up. It comes with a small cup. The directions are put seven drops from each bottle in that cup for each liter to be treated. In five minutes, it's ready to use. Again, I mix the stuff first, filling all my bottles, but could take about five minutes or close to it. When the Aquamira is ready, the liquid in the cup is yellow in color. It has bubbles forming. It has a faint chlorine odor. That odor is caused by chlorine dioxide, a gas. 
After we add the aqua mira to clear water in warm weather, we are instructed to wait 15 minutes before we drink it. I've never been so dehydrated that I couldn't get through that 15 minutes without suffering. The reality is I don't carry one of those small cups. I carry three, two others from earlier purchases. If I use that platypus and MSR bag, I can treat four quarts of water to stop plus a fifth quart in a Gatorade bottle if I need it. If Aquamira gives the water a taste, I have not been able to detect it. I understand that toward the northern end of the AT, it's often necessary to rely on ponds as a water source. At such time as I ever get up there, I don't think I would rely on Aquamira or a similar treatment for my water because I wouldn't expect water in a pond to be as clean as water from a spring. Instead, I think I'd choose a Sawyer filter. Sawyer tells us if the filters freeze with water in them, that pretty much ruins them. One option in cold conditions is to put the Sawyer in a Ziploc bag, carry it in a pocket close to our body, and perhaps keep it in our sleeping bag at night. Yet when we consider how economical the Sawyer Mini is, I would not hesitate to carry a second one, just in case for some reason my first one stopped working. And now we're done. If you find my videos helpful, please subscribe. It would be much appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching.